are legitimate white supremacist sympathizers that sit at the heart and at the core of the Republican caucus in the House of Representatives. And it increasingly seems, unfortunately, that in the House Republican caucus, Kevin McCarthy answers to these QAnon members of Congress, not the other way around. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez with some bold claims there, slamming her Republican colleagues and a senior House GOP aide tells Fox News, quote, at a time when America should be coming together, she's trying to further divide this nation. Joining us now, Republican Congressman Brad Wenstrup. He's a Republican from Ohio. You just heard the Congresswoman's words. Your response? Well, first of all, I would say if there's any controversy within our conference, that's something that uh, we will manage from within. Our leader, Kevin McCarthy, has a good relationship with each and every member and has a personal relationship with each and every member, as well as a good relationship with us as a group. And if we have some controversial things taking place, uh, we'll manage it. We're going to come out here being unified and try and lead our country as best we can from a minority position. And one of the things that we have to deal with today that's of major importance is a lot of these executive orders that are being put in place that harm jobs for so many Americans, put some of our national security at risk. And so there's there's a lot to deal with, and we're going to tend to not get tied up into some of the rhetoric that comes from the other side. She paints your party with a broad brush when she uses those words. What's the impact of rhetoric like that now, especially now uh, within the House of Representatives, sir? Well, it's been a problem. You know, these, 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 these categorizations without fact to back things up are, are sometimes a, a huge problem acro across the board. But we've seen so many things that it should be disturbing us as a nation in the last four years, especially. Uh, you know, you could go back to the Russian collusion narrative. It was false. You can go into the type of rhetoric that inspired that gentleman, a gentleman I use term loosely, that came to the ballpark and tried to assassinate 25 to 30 Republicans, who was inspired by Bernie Sanders. You know, people need to you talk about, you know, careful what you say. There's there's a lot of things being said to paint people with a broad brush. And you know what, what happens most of the time for us as members of Congress, and we find that out in our districts, when you sit down with people that have opposite views, they realize you're not what pe people mm. are accusing you of very often. And so... You know, it just is a distraction for us when we have work to be done. And we do have work to be done. But under the leadership in the House right now with the Democrats, it's going to be very challenging. To just look at our schedule and how yeah. diminished it is. That we're, not even, we're not even getting together in Congress. And we're living under executive orders when we're the ones that are supposed to be legislating. You know, the executive order thing has always been a concern for the legislature. And as a legislature, we need to step up and, and, and be able to do our job. I've always said from the beginning, too, we deal in an environment where agencies have rule of law, and then we try to pass laws to stop them yeah. from doing what you're doing. Things are kind of turned on their head. Maybe we should just tone down the rhetoric and sit down and get to, to do the work of the American people. That's my message when we hear things like that. Forty executive orders and actions already taken on the part of this new president. Um, I, I want to move on, but what what has been the length of your conversations with that congresswoman who just made those claims about you and your party? Well, she came in last term, and uh, she doesn't sit on any of the committees that I sit on, and so I really have had no engagement with her. Hmm. Um, the committees I'm on, Ways and Means and Intelligence, do not have freshman members. Got and it. so, especially on the other side of the aisle, you don't have much engagement with them. I'm sure I've been on the elevator and exchanged pleasantries, but that's been about it. Got it. Real quick, final thought, uh, Congressman. You and I spoke at length several weeks ago on the Eric Swalwell Chinese spy story. You sit on the Intelligence Committee, sir, uh, as does he. Uh, where has that story gone? Have you been able to get any more information on that? And are you still concerned about him being on that committee? Uh, I am concerned on, about that. And as we start to uh, meet and come together, I think you're going to hear more about it if he's still going to be present there. You've seen what the Speaker of the House, uh, Pelosi, has done. She's basically stood up for him. And now we see that he's going to be one of the prosecutors, if you will, in this impeachment trial. Yep. You, you just can't make this stuff up. You know, I think that uh, we really have some concerns with that because what we've seen from Mr. Swalwell in the, in the last several years 
is uh, p been pretty reckless, I think, sometimes with, with facts and also about pretty sanctimonious at times. And, and so we, we have got to drive this issue forward. There's a lot of national security issues, and right now I would put him in that category. It just doesn't make sense that someone who had a relationship with a Chinese spy sits on our intelligence committee, and there's been no uh, way of letting the American people, and especially us on the committee and the yes. members of Congress, no way of letting us know what actually took place and why he should still be in the position that he's in. Well, keep us posted, Congressman. We'll continue to follow the story. Appreciate you coming on this afternoon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Senator. Okay, John.